welcome to uh, one of our last sessions. So actually, this is actually our last session. Sorry, my bad. Um, so hopefully you guys have had a great semester thus far. It's been really cool being able to share all this stuff with you all. Um, <clears throat> um, it's been uh, really awesome to be able to see you guys uh, post stuff in the uh, inspiration forum, your free rights, uh, your um, video discussions, all of it's been wonderful. So I appreciate you guys very much. And um, I, uh, I, I'm truly inspired by like all the work you guys are doing. I've been sharing with you guys about, um, about uh, New Mexico's literary um, landscapes and like what uh, we have to offer in regard to that and in, in regard to the literary works in regard to the culture in regard to the history. Um, I know I always focus a lot on that and a big part of it is because that's what it is. Um, it is that stuff. And so just like we said before, it's not just about um, written works. It's also about those oral traditions too that we are so embedded in here in New Mexico. Um, that's a part of who we are. That's a part of like what makes us uh, so special too. And so, and it just so happens that we can take those literary, those oral traditions and turn them into literary works. Um, the stories, the cuentos, the dichos, all that good stuff. Alabados, the songs, the corridos, all of that is a special way for us to continue to, to keep those traditions alive, but placing them in a more modern context with the um, uh, literary forms, poetry, all that good stuff, right? And, and the last part of this, of the, um, uh, mo one of the last modules you guys really focused on poetry, and, and I think that's one thing that we really contribute well um to um uh literary forms um globally it's not just here in the south or or the southwest it's 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 internationally too we have these poets who go all over the place like levi romero was in uh, egypt like a couple of summers ago and like we just see all this stuff happen and it's a it's a really beautiful thing and it's part of our traditions like that's what we do here and that's what's so special about it and, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys working hard this semester. Um, hopefully you guys really enjoyed it, the course. Um, uh, with that said, too, uh, uh, the course evaluations will be opening up, I think, next week. So if you guys can go on there and give us a, a new eval, would be awesome. I uh, appreciate it very much. Um, because that helps us to be able to keep these classes and to keep uh, the professors who are teaching them in, in their place uh, in the place of teaching that course, uh, not in their place, but <laughs> keeping them in that position. Right. And so, uh, please make sure you guys do that. Um, it always helps us to, to better our classes and stuff too. Um, I also want to remind you guys that this, uh, week will be, um, uh, the last week you could turn in anything late. I let people turn in things late the whole semester. So, uh, hopefully you guys understood that, uh, too. I mentioned at the beginning, but just to reiterate, uh, so please make sure you get that stuff in. Then you guys are starting to work on your, you guys start working on your digital cuentos. So the goal is to get those done uh, so that you guys are able to um, be done with your semester. Um, I'm posting it up so you guys can start working on it. Um, it's due on the 10th, I think of, uh, or the, yeah, the 10th. And so please make sure to go and check that out. Um, yeah, so cool. Um, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to close out uh, this one. I'm not going to be here too long. I wanted to try to keep it short, but you know me, I'm kind of long-winded, so sometimes I talk longer than I need to. Um, but we're closing it out by talking and going back to the idea of, of querencia. And we wanted to do that too because part of your um, your digital cuento is, can in, um, incorporate that. And so I wanted to make sure that you guys are 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 clear on what it means to have what querencia is, and that's part of like what we did this semester is is building upon that querencia, like knowing about that. Us as Nuevo Mexicanos, the ones that are from from here, not the, you all that are out of state, you guys ha have it too, maybe for uh, from your family groups and in, in your state and your culture. But here, uh, part of our querencia is 
the are these things they are these stories they are these pieces of poetry they are these songs right um and i'll explain some of that too because i think like my carencia is kind of interesting too and i want to share that with you guys um as well because like i think uh that's an important part of it another important part is the herencia too and so um last time i'm going to share a powerpoint with you guys this semester um but hopefully you enjoy it okay so like we said querencia is very uh, a very important part of who we are our identities right this helps to shape who we are as people and how we understand the world and the world we live in and the spaces that we um engage with right <clears throat> and so uh Querencia is a very important part of our culture. And, and I, I, not all of us say it that way, like, oh, it's our querencia. But more and more, we're starting to see that. Uh, but more and more, we're starting to see people that are engaging with it and saying, yeah, this is my querencia, right? And so um, querencia is that place, right? It's a place in which uh, someone's uh, strength is drawn uh, or a, play, a sense of place in which anchors that person to the to the land or the what makes their... Uh, uh, makes us such a unique people um, it implies deeply rooted knowledge too of place and for that reason uh, we respect it as our home so it's that place that one feel where one feels home right it's this connectedness um, and so one thing about it is you have to like really um, focus on the fact that we um, have these things that make us feel at home right um, I always joke around and when I talk about this, because like my wife loves watching those like Hallmark movies and it's always like home is where the heart is or home isn't always a place. It could be a person. <laughs> so like, uh, but it's true. And that's one thing that I think is funny about it is like we do uh, have those places um, that make us feel at home we even and sometimes it is a person. Um, and sometimes it's a combination of, and I think that's what's so beautiful about Querencia. And I think like uh, we don't engage with it enough and think about it enough. And that's why I think it's important for us to kind of do that now because it helps us to understand more about what gives us our strength and more about um, our identities themselves, right? And so that's an important thing too. And so Querencia does that. So for me, like I always like giving this example. When I'm like pretty stressed out or I'm like feeling disconnected um, and I need that power and I need to find, remember where I draw that from. There's a couple of places I go. Uh, one of them I'm sharing in this video, cause I'm going to, I'm going to take you guys to one of the spots uh, where I tend to um, go whenever I do need that stuff. Right. When I do need that reconnection. Right. Um, but one of them is my abuela's kitchen. Um, and it's just a little, she has a little house, nothing all crazy. And uh, she has this kitchen that I can, I have so many fond memories of because um, they were uh, times whenever I felt uh, that connection to like a space, right? I felt safe, you know, and like, I didn't, don't get me wrong, I, wouldn't feel, I felt safe in my home, but there was just something about her kitchen. And it was because of that combo, right? It was multimodal. It was multi-sensory, right? It wasn't just like, oh, there's a space. No, it was everything. So all this stuff ends up being a part of my credencia. And I can draw it in even like whenever I'm out and about and I and I engage with some, some kind of uh, sensory input, right? And so uh, my credencia is her kitchen. And specifically like sitting there with her um, making food, and so one of the things that we did. So like, like I said, one of my memories is of making empanaditas or empanadas in her house, right? And we were sat there and I, I was one of my only family members that liked the minced meat empanadas. And so everybody, we would just make like, you know, fruit ones or whatever, cherry and, and all that good stuff. Choke cherry was like a real popular one we had in uh, calabaza or pumpkin um and so we were sitting there making them and so whenever i smell that now like when i smell empanadas like if i'm somewhere over here 
and they're making empanadas or or the dough, I like that. I go back there to that space, right? Just from the smell. Uh, so like I said, it's multi-sensory too. And uh, another thing too from there is like the way it, it looked too. Like I remember all this stuff. I remember the meat grinder for making the mincemeat ones. I remember uh, laying out the dough and, and my abuela's hands uh, uh, shaping the empanadas and using a fork to, to smash up the ends. I mean, like there's all this stuff. So even when I see like a fork, sometimes I go there. Right. Um, and then another thing too, is like my, my abuela loved music or not loved. She's still alive. So she loves music. And so like, like she still plays a harmonica, um, every time I'm around her and she plays it like my, my tias. And then whenever they're with her too, they'll send me video of her playing, because music was a big part of it too. So uh, when I hear certain songs, same thing. Like when I hear some of those old, like uh, Flor de las Flores and stuff like that, you know, uh, De Colores and all that stuff. Like I, it takes me back there because I remember her distinctively playing a tape. Like this was in the eighties, right? So she, my, my abuela's like, she's a, 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 she always refers to as like a modern woman, right? She knows how to use technology. Like still she has a smartphone and she knows how to use it. She knows how to text and all that stuff. 101 years old. Right. And uh, she had a tape and it was a tape of her and her uh, primos and, and hermanos playing music. And they're playing all those tunes like that. And so she would put that in and we'd listen to it. And it was just the tape they recorded like on a little cassette deck, uh, like in the, early 80s 70s you know what I mean later 70s um of them just playing music and um it was so cool you know and so like now when I hear those tunes it takes me back there so there's a bunch of that stuff that makes me connect with that um so whether it is the um the music the sound uh of the cooking and all that stuff her the the visual stuff um even the taste, right? Like when I take, take, when I bite into an empanada, I'm back there. Why? Because that's part of my credencia and it can, and it gives me comfort. And so I always tell people, I'm a gordito, right? And a part of it is like, even things like that, like prior to my demise that happens, you know, that I connect with it. And it's like a strength for me, right? Uh, to do that. Um, when I'm stressed out too, I can take myself there by listening to the music and stuff like that too. So that's one of them. The other one is 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 um the bosque, which I'll I'm sharing in my video now too. Um and that was uh an area that sp I spend a lot of time at and I still engage with. I I go there almost every day. And so that's another spot, right? That's part of my querencia. Um it's that place where I get that connection, right? So now I'll, I'm going to show you the video of that. Um so you guys can see like what my area is like the actual physical place where um I engage with my credencia and I and is part it is my credencia, right? So enjoy this. Hello. I uh, just wanted to take you guys by a little bit of my credencia. Uh growing up over here in Albuquerque, um and by the Atrisco uh neighborhood. Um this has always been a place where I spent a lot of time growing up and stuff like that too. So I wanted to show you a little bit in, uh, of it, um, especially areas where I spend a lot of time and still do, cause I go on walks here like almost every day, um, just to like reconnect and stuff like that too. Bueno. So this is where I always spend a lot of time when I was a kid uh, and still do today when I come walk. Um, the bosque is right there. And you can see there's the mountains in the background. I mean, <laughs> it's desert out here, but it's uh, it's beautiful and relaxing. Uh, this is an area where I spent a lot of time with my familia uh, growing up, uh, running these little trails and crap with each other. Good stuff over here. So this is the bosque part. This is where we get to walk through to get to uh, actually to get to the river where I like hanging out um, but this is the bosque part so we have to walk through here to get through there this is pretty much a trail that I take uh, fairly frequently probably like every other day um, and it's just awesome I love it 
beautiful right now the leaves are pretty green it's nice coming in here in the change of the season but yeah you can see bosque so here we are at the river the rio grande um this is uh the actual spot that i actually spent a lot of time um at growing up and have great memories of um uh, spending a lot of time in the water of course um and uh jumping around hanging out throwing people in it when they weren't we weren't supposed to uh, all that good stuff um but this is the spot this is where we used to chill this is still a spot where i come for reflection and stuff like that too um i still <laughs> usually i still get in um and it's it's a beautiful thing um, and I'm lucky to have been able to have been around this uh, and continue to be around this my whole life. Um, the Rio has really provided a lot for my familia and myself, um, not only just with beauty, but also with the actual um, water being used for irrigation. Um, and so it's it's always been just a wonderful thing for, for me to, to be able to have access to. Um, and it's it's hard to see it dwindle down so much as you could see here like there's like a little cliff area here where you know really re really the reel would be that high up usually but yeah so this is a part of the area where i i grew up with and still continue to to access today this is the area i was talking about where i used to scare my cousins when i'd act like i was the yorona um just right over there is where i would kind of hide behind those trees and you have to run up this hill uh to get to where we get where we had to walk home um so i scared them here and then when i was walking up my sister was further down over there <laughs> doing the same noise like scared the hell out of me and then you have to walk up the hill and then we would go home through right there uh passing by the arroyo um and so it was even more scary or scarier uh, because we had to pass by that still too and uh everybody was this is during the 80s when i said when everybody was afraid of the ditch witch and so we came through here too and this is the ditch that they do use for irrigation and so the asequias are over there uh, you can actually see some of the stuff there too but yeah this was a uh, part of my credencia hope you enjoy it so this is my, part of my credencia um uh all these memories that i have at the rio has been amazing and i'll never forget them and continue to make even with my family with bringing my kids out here and stuff like that too uh, where we still make it a big part of our lives um but yeah that's part of it bueno bye welcome back uh let me move along to to the next part because i think another part of it uh that's important to engage with and understand is is the idea of herencia uh, oh before we go i wanted to make sure that you guys think about these questions what are your connections to the tierra and the traditions and rituals that have shaped your identity. What are those? Like mine was making empanadas and cooking with my abuela, learning how to make tortillas, all that stuff. Uh, chaquewe um, or atole. Um, all that stuff was an important part of my engagement with my carencia, right? Uh, what are yours? You know, think about those things. How do they, how do you, how do you engage with them still, right? And then what are your memories or recuerdos that you have uh, that have influenced your carencia? I shared you, shared one with you with, for me was my abuela right and cooking empanadas like that's a part of it but we have those and we and we and we have our carencia but what about herencia okay what is what is that for us uh it's that right of an, a person to inherit um by by law or by will um assets rights obligations that are inherited from a person after his or her death but we also inherit things that, that's like a, a legal term, right? But really, herencia is those things that we inherit from our culture too. And so that's why I like bringing this up is that comparison to like the legal definition and then the a definition of like obligation to maintain our culture, right? And so for us, 
it's really about that. It's it's about engaging in that. It's about um, using our carencia as a as a source of power and a source to reconnect. But it's also about sharing, right? It's also about um, maintaining the culture. And so sometimes, like for me, like when I talk about my abuela um, being in her kitchen and stuff like that too, like we still do empanadas. We still make bizcochitos. We still make uh, tortillas, right? Why? Because she showed us that. And now as an as uh, an arbiter of my familial and cultural traditions, which is what you guys need to think about too, I still engage with that. Like I've shown my my kids how to do it, right? Um, my abuela showed me how to, is the person that showed me how to build a fire. So for me, it was, that was showing um, my kids the same thing, right? And so those are those things. That's how we maintain culture. Also, a big part of it is sharing those stories, sharing those cuentos, telling people about our querencia, um, telling them about those moments, um, letting them in and, and see what that is, right? Um, that's an important part. Me taking people when I when I have family or I mean friends or something that come into town that never been here before or, or um, colleagues or whatever, I always take them on that walk that I showed you guys. Why? Because that's part of my carencia. That's part of, and that's part of New Mexico to me, right? Like, so I want to, I want people to engage in it. I want them to see how beautiful it is. I want them to, to uh, uh, continue to see that that's a, a thing, right? It's, it's, it's not, it hasn't disappeared. It hasn't gone away. It's there. Uh, we're still here, right? Uh, Nuevo Mexicano culture has not disappeared. It's still alive. Um, and even though we have like assimilated into certain things in regard to like American society or U.S. society, we still have that engagement. And that's one thing that's really beautiful about here. But our herencia is that. And so how do we become arbiters of that? How do we continue to share those traditions? Because that's an important part. So whenever you take on your carencia, part of it is being able to, to you inherit something that needs to be maintained and sustained. And so my advice to you is to engage in it. Let people know about it. Share that, you know, uh, share your querencia. Um, keep it yours and keep it safe and keep it protected. Uh, but you want people to know what it is. You want people to see the beauty of it, right? You want people to see uh, the importance of it. And so that's why it's important to do this stuff. Um, I look forward to your digital cuentos. I'm like so ready to see what you guys are going to do because you guys have done such great work this semester with all of your stuff. Um, so I'm really in, in, in interested and excited to to see where you guys go with your digital cuentos. Um, I have I, I know we did the the proposals. Most of them, um, you most most people turn theirs in. Uh, make sure you get yours in uh, as soon as possible so I can make sure to. That I give you insight and stuff like that if needed, but everybody's looked good. So go with it, make something awesome. You know, this is 50% of your grade. So you guys need to really um, do your best on this part uh, because it is a very important part. I mean, this is, this is the moment where we get to engage not only with what we've learned, but also like the things that are important to us, right? Like our carencia um, and also uh, the literary works that, that really, um, stick out to us and that we want to be arbiters of um, the, that inheritance, right? The inheritance of acquiring those uh, pieces of literary works too, or, or the, the people that wrote them, you know? So it's, it's, it's about that. Like you, you are now, if you engage with that and that's something you connected with, that's part of it now. Okay. So now you have to engage with it and, and make us uh, make them proud. You know, I always tell people, make your ancestors proud. Um, do it, you know? Um, and maintain that culture. Um, if you have questions, please hit me up. Uh, if not, I am look like I said, I'm looking forward so much to seeing your your all's uh, um, work. Um, af after this week, you guys won't have another video. It's just going to be working on your on your final projects. Okay. Um, uh, like I said, let me know if you have questions. Uh, it's been wonderful having you guys here. I can't wait to. Uh, um, uh, hopefully have some of your, your friends and colleagues and familia in the class next time. Um, 
and I can't wait to meet. I, I know I'm going to be able to meet some of you guys, and, and I've already met some of you guys in person, but uh, engage with you guys too um, in 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 the real world, not just virtually. Bueno, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your semester, and I look forward to um, all your work, and I appreciate you guys all for all, all you've done. Bueno, bye.